Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Uh, I may need to throw out the tender to some musically inclined students to produce me a jingle that I can uh, play at the start of these um, if I'm going to keep doing them. So if you find them helpful, let me know. Um, but I digress. We are talking about the second form of TRP operon um, regulation, the first one being repression, this one being called attenuation. Now, let's compare those two words, okay? Repression is where we stop something from beginning in the first place, okay? So when we think back to TRP operon repression, the repressor actually stops transcription from taking place in the first place, okay? We don't need TRP, so we don't start transcribing, okay? But imagine we've already started the process. This really nifty system um, basically attenuates it. Okay, so attenuation, we recall from maybe immunity a while ago, um, back in year 10 maybe, and what we will do later this year. Attenuation means to weaken something or shorten it. Okay, so in this case, we've started transcription, but we want to stop it midway through. We want to cut it short. Okay, we want to attenuate it. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of a few things. The TRP operon, and operon is just a group of genes coding for something in particular. In this case, it's an operon coding for tryptophan, okay? Um, if we look here, we've got our promoter region, our operator region, and now we've got this sequence here before the genes, but after the operator, where we have this leader sequence and this attenuator sequence, okay? And these are gonna make sense in just a second, okay? Now, the leader sequence, encodes what's called these leader peptides. Now, they're going to include some TRP residues, so where we actually need tryptophan for that little sequence. And the attenuator is just a sequence of nucleotides that are going to try to bind together to form different types of loops that will either stop the process or attenuate the process or not stop the process, okay? So it's a really nifty system. Let's go across and have a look at the different ways that it does this. Okay, so we've got our high TRP environment over here. So we can see that the RNA polymerase has already jumped on. Okay, so transcription is already taking place. Now, one thing that's really key to think about in bacteria is that it's different from eukaryotes where we have a very delineated transcription then translation process. In our bacteria, it's slightly different. As the RNA polymerase is moving along the mRNA sequence, the ribosome is basically right behind it or right next to it, basically translating that mRNA sequence as soon as it's getting built. Okay, so these things happen really, really quickly almost together. Okay, so that's a big key difference that you really need to understand um, to make sense of this process, okay? So essentially what happens is if we have a high TRP environment, we remember that the leader section, so this where this one is, has coded for some tryptophan, okay? Now, if there's tryptophan in the environment, you can imagine there's high levels of TRP in the environment, it doesn't need to wait long, okay? The tRNA brings the tryptophan over, immediately, okay? Now, that, while it sounds a bit weird, is actually a bad thing if we want to create tryptophan because what happens in this, in, in this attenuation sequence is that these hairpin loops form, okay? And just by virtue of the way that this process works, if the mRNA is moved through really quickly, then this type of loop forms, which is called a terminator loop, okay? So there might be all A's on this side and all T's on this side, and they decide to bind together if it's happening really quickly, okay? It's called a terminator hairpin, and it doesn't let the ribosome translate that section, okay? So all you get is this sort of short, stubby, stubby uh, mRNA sequence with this short, stubby polypeptide, that isn't anything, okay? It's not tryptophan, okay? The ribosome finishes early, falls off the mRNA, and you've got this useless polypeptide, okay? It's nothing, okay? So it actually drops off, 
before it starts transcribing or translating, uh, translating and transcribing the actual TRP genes. Okay, that's very different from the low TRP environment. Okay, so now what we can see is that a different loop is forming. Okay, so we can see you don't need to know the numbers, but you can see that here it's three and four that are forming this loop. Here it's two and three that are forming the loop. So the difference is that in this environment, this ribosome is having to wait a lot longer because you're waiting a long time to get this TRP, okay? You're sort of looking at your watch thinking, when's this TRP going to come? And as you're waiting for the TRP to be brought to finish off that leader sequence, this type of hairpin forms instead of this one, okay? We don't need to go into detail why that happens. You just need to know that it does happen, okay? So this ribosome stalling as it's going through that translation process essentially causes this anti-terminator hairpin to form, which it can move around, okay? If you need a visual way to look at it, this hairpin looks smaller, looks harder for the ribosome to move through. This one looks a bit bigger, it's got a bit more space to move through. That's just a way that you can imagine it. But essentially, it stalls, waiting for the TRP. This different hairpin forms, which allows it to move through, and then it goes along and starts transcribing and translating the rest of that operon, okay? That's all it is. Okay, maybe you'll hear some more details along the way, but majority of what we do is this attenuation and that repression, and hopefully after these videos you can see that it's actually not as hard as it seems. Okay, I would really um, recommend that you do something like I'm doing now, where you actually talk your way through the process, because that ability to, um, to verbalize it, articulate it, will really help you build that process in your mind. And if you see that it actually fits a logical sequence, um, you'll be able to learn it really, really quickly. Um, so I hope that's helped. Um, make sure you watch some other videos as well that might um, explain it in different ways. Um, but hopefully that gets it across to you as well. Um, let me know if these are helpful and um, I'll try and produce some more for other areas of um, assistance that's needed. Have a great day and I'll see you next time on Mr. Marinelli's video reviews. I can probably come up with a more catchy name as well.